<laughs> so um, we're going to talk uh, briefly about this um, um, excellent new pamphlet, Bracketa, Bracketa, Bracking Capitalism, uh, which has been written by an, a world to win writing collective consisting of myself, <laughs> Matt, Jerry, Donald, there's Donald. And uh, and edited by Paul with excellent photographs by Peter Arkell from Balkan. Uh, and uh, so we thought um, that uh, Matt and I would just uh, do a sort of brief uh, presentation. Uh, I think we're going to have to cut it short uh, because. Um, we out of time. Uh, however, we will say slightly more than read the panel. Uh, but it's all in there, so we hope you will. Um, so um, I'm going to sort of hang over to Matt, who's going to talk about some of the key uh, elements of the, um, uh, the, the pamphlet. Obviously, the, one of the main characteristics is the extent to which the, the concept of extending Capitalism's extractive uh, power to this extremely close to home form at a time when whole generations have grown up and never had a mine or pit in their in their area, and this extremely untested, untried uh, form of gaining more fossil fuel to burn to make climate change even worse than it already is has had the effect of galvanizing whole communities in opposition. As we found that we were in Wigan, up in the northeast, the northwest, where fracking is a, a major uh, issue, in, uh, in uh, Falkirk, um, around Falkirk in Scotland, where the issue is not fracking, but the extraction of coal bed methane from the old coal fields of Fife. Uh, and of course, at uh, Balkan in uh, Leafy, Sussex. So Matt's going to talk a bit about these movements and what they represent. So, um, Penny, Penny, Penny introduced just just then about um, about the need for community resistance, and I think I'm sure I'm sure most of you know a bit about fracking, and it is it is for the UK, which is what we're going to focus on, because um, we need to build what what we can do here in, in, in the first instance. And it's, it's, it's very important that we have community resistance uh, campaigns because of the potentially devastating effect of fracking on the UK. Because um, I think an important point before I go into this is it's never been done on the scale that they're gonna do it, they're proposing to do it on such a densely populated uh, uh, place as the UK. And the issues of water contamination, air pollution, gas flaring, the emission of highly chemicals in all those processes um, will affect will affect everyone in scale close to the full production basically. So every I, I'm, I'm proposing basically through these slides how every every community can have its own um, community resistance um, nexus through the internet, I guess, with its own um, with the shell being very constant, and there, there's all, there have already been two um, two locations where fracking has been attempted in Balkan, and where uh, it's about to commence uh, the exploratory drilling in a place called Barton Moss, which is next to Salford. Um, and both these, both the um, community protection camps, as they call themselves, have done their own sites, and they're very similar. And it's um, worth looking at how you can how you can take advantage of the transferability of these websites um, kind of shell. So this is the one for Barton Moss, and you can see there, um, it, it focuses on several things. Ideally, uh, an, a live news feed is part of it. You can sign up, um, and it's, uh, you can link through Twitter to social media very easily. It also tells you about what to do if you got arrested, which is quite important for some people who might who, who might 
it might end up going that it can happen to anyone, of course. Um, it's very similar, as you'll see, to the Great Gas Scala, which is this is what the people of Belgium organised. Um, <coughs> it allows you to sign up there and let, it can let everyone know <coughs> when activities are about to start. So that's important. Um, you can get your phone number. That's quite risky, I suppose. Basically. Being on the website probably quite risky. Yeah, being on the website itself is risky. But giving your phone number, which could then be tracked by police, uh, just by the number, I think is even worse. But anyway, that's for I suppose that is for people to decide. And it gives you a number of options, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. You can donate, um, it tells you what to bring, it tells you it will, it will have, these sites have live feeds, and that's the, the port one of the most important points I want to get across in a short time is the issue of real-time communication because we've been talking a lot about the, uh, the, the new tool of communication the internet uh, constitutes for us um, and real-time communication is an important new um, weapon <laughs> weapon you have against state media that hasn't, has not been, as we've never had before um, We've never had it before, and it's important because it, it's sort of, I have the best way to put it, it can break consensus in real time. If you have, if you have the government trying to control the BBC and the BBC's Twitter account saying, oh, the protesters are all local, they're, they're all renter mobs, for example. All these, all these um, slurs and arguments they use to try and exploit prejudices against what typically people consider environmentalists. This is this is a way of fighting back um, because you can you can you can challenge them in real time. They will link to reports for example telling you that fracking is is safe, it's not safe. It, it is not safe and this is something we're gonna have to educate people. This is what fracking capitalism is about. It talks about the science, it talks about the unsustainable polluting nature of fracking. Um, but that's part of linking it to the internet in a powerful way. Another tool is Bambooza. Um, just to go through quickly, um, some of you probably have seen it. Uh, you can upload videos. Uh, the idea is what you can do with it would be recording police wrongdoing with your mobile phone, which is um, quite easy to do and it's probably not that risky. Um, police can try and seize your phone, I suppose, and that that's so it's not with it's fraught with risk again, but it's important because it links to what we something we discussed at the previous event, which was about countering the state surveillance. Like they, they, they watch us and we, we have to try and watch them and show people how they operate. And that's a way you can do that. Um, you can have local residents speaking as well. Um, it also um, uh, I won't I won't show you, but I can show you in the future through the link or something how it the bamboos basically has a map and you can look at where protests, if fracking takes off and there'll be a few sites going at once, you can see them and people can quickly get an idea of where, what things are going on. Um, change track a bit. Um, I thought I'd also talk about what, how communities have mobilized in other parts of the world. Um, one place where fracking has been attempted is in, is in Poland, in a place called uh, Zyralal or something. That's, uh, yeah, I wrote it there. I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, but there's, um, they, they had a different strategy, um, and two strong elements of that strategy were to get the farmers out, who were the people who would, would have been most affected by the drilling there, because it's, it's taking place in an area of very high quality farmland, and the farmers were, because they have that connection to the land in a way that perhaps the UK farmers don't have, they, they were very militant in, uh, as you can see, physically obstructing the process uh, of Chevron, which is the company that's trying to do it there at the moment. Um, <coughs> so it is, it's a possibility to try and get farmers on site in the UK because they will be affected by the pollution of the land from the chemicals that can lead to the surface, as, as, as talked about in the, in the pamphlet, and methane in particular which reduces the quality of arable land <coughs> substantially and very catastrophically. Um, I also thought I heard the church, <laughs> it's, it's quite a minor point really, I thought I'd bring it up because um, in, in Poland as you can see um, there, there has been a strong element against, I don't know, land contamination, they see that as a violation of purity. I think. Um, but lastly, and most importantly, I'll talk about community charters. Um, 
a community in Falkirk who are resisting Colbert Meathing, as Penny said, have developed their own community charter. Um, this is what, obviously, perhaps the most important thing we need to do to, to help community resistance move beyond resistance. Um, because it, it is saying, it gives alternatives, it says, it demands control by the community, and it says what the communities would like to do instead, and what they're perfectly, what they should be perfectly empowered to do, because it is about natural laws. And there are two examples here of what the Falter community put in their charter. Um, um, you can look, look it up on the site, um, but it's, um, you can read it for yourself, some two things here. They emphasise the ecosystem as resilience, the basis of resilience, and that's, uh, that's a really important concept um, of, all, of all that's in there that I wanted to highlight because um, uh, that's something capitalism ignores, and it's something that, um, something that will be continually undermined as it attempts to divide and fragment ecosystems into purposes for profit without understanding how the whole connects together. And obviously, a resilient ecosystem <coughs> is your way of ensuring food security and climate change. Basically, that is, if, if that's compromised, it's, um, that's your main base of resistance, of resilience lost to, to that kind of altered future. Um, and so I think that's the most important thing to go away with. Um, is how we can go into communities where fracking is going to take off soon, or they're going to attempt it anyway. Um, and we really, we really try and facilitate as much discussion as possible and encourage people to make their own document, basically. Um, a few more slides to illustrate how easy it is. Um, that's a page of the website where you can sign it online. You have to be a resident, obviously, um, at Falkirk. Um, uh, something they did with a community <coughs> mandate where they basically you, you see, they, they distill it into demand, into demands of of the system, and, um, demands really of, of the of the community. This is what we, this is what the alternative we propose. And they say, yes, uh, I don't know if you can read that, but the first point is about um, the precautionary principle. The first two points: the fact that we don't know what would happen if you did this, um, and there's plenty of evidence to suggest it would be catastrophic unintended consequences through pollution, water contamination. So they emphasize that and say, you can't do this until you know for sure that this, this, this won't cause, this won't lead to those kind of effects. And the third, the other two points are about demanding that the councils, the local councils, which is some maybe a contentious point, but some sort of locally um, empowered body um, has, um, um, has their role, I mean, is included in the part in the process of facilitating um, and decision making, which obviously centralisation through this, um, the Gulf of Westminster are trying to deny. They're trying to centralise it all and make it a matter of national energy policy, fracking, to disempower communities of any discussing more detail. And finally, renewable energy, the alternative, that's the fourth point there. So uh, that's pretty much all I want to say. Yes. So, any, um, the next we were planning to have a sort of uh, a bit of a sort of um, a conversation, but I suspect we don't really have time to do that now. Look, ten minutes. <coughs> exactly. So we don't have time to do that now. So I'm just going to go on briefly to sort of say a little bit more about the pamphlet from the point of view of the approach that the pamphlet itself has taken. Um, and then we'll have maybe you know, five minutes for questions and answers at the, and discussion at the end. Um, the reason why this, um, uh, it's important to address this question of fracking is because, as we say on this issue of the um, universal appearing through the particular and the particular involved in forming our understanding of the universal, this... Um, process of fracking is a, is, is, it's not just symbolic, it is a major aspect of this new and destructive phase of capitalism, uh, which Jerry's talked about in terms of the financial destruction yeah. and the economic destruction in terms of closures and so on. But uh, there's a, the, um, 
we, we actually call this an eco-social crisis, which is, you know, a world to win's definition of where we are at this point in human history, that we are no longer just in an economic or financial crisis, we are in an eco-social crisis where there is every possibility of reaching tipping points beyond which it will not be possible to take action to mitigate the impacts of climate change. And if you read the IPCC's report that uh, was leaked, it won't come out formally until September, but which was leaked a couple of weeks ago, it says exactly this, that unless action is taken now to reduce fossil fuel burning, we could very quickly in this century, uh, in, the, in, in fact, in, in really quite close periods of time, come to the point where it's too late to, to take mitigating action for whole areas of the planet, populated areas of the planet. Um, and um, so what has been very exciting for me about um, following the, the development of um, the uh, community resistance to these new kinds of fossil fuel extraction, not just fossil fuels, but also gold and other metals and so on, as the extent to which um, people have in the com their communities have gone beyond the point where they only protest and are beginning, as we've seen with the Falkirk Charter, to develop their own concept of the alternative. What is the economic alternative to extracting gold from the Rose Mountains uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, in wherever it was, Romania. in Romania? What, what is the economic alternative for the people who live in that area, the farmers who farm that area? They have developed their own economic alternative, as have the people in Falkirk. And this is a big and significant and important development, which did also begin with the Cochabamba Declaration. So what's good about that is that really from a World to Win's point of view, that we have from you know, the, from the start when the book The World to Win was written, stressed the importance of not just protesting against what is, but developing a concept of the alternative. And putting that forward in a brave and courageous way, and proposing to people that they should fight for it, that that is what is needed. Um, so the fact that people are now doing this, making these um, charters themselves, is very important. <coughs> so um, in, in um, looking at the, um, the pamphlet, we conclude um, the pamphlet with a section which is called Frack Capitalism to Build a Sustainable Future. And in it we put forward a whole <coughs> series of, um, of propositions about you know, what, how, how we can go beyond this um, uh, current uh, economic model and come up with a, a, a a framework within which human beings can develop an economy, which they have to have, we have to have an economy, we all have to eat, etc., etc., but an economy that is much more in line with and recognizes the limits with, of, of uh, what we can do with the resources that we have here on planet Earth. Um, and there's a specific action plan for the UK, which is what you know we'd like to people to sort of discuss. But how, how, you know, what communities can, how, what concept we can put forward straight away. I'd just like to finally say there is a section which relates very much to what we've been doing here today, which is called the Battle of Ideas. And um, what, what it says is that capitalism <coughs> is, is underpinned not only by laws, but also by an ideology. And this ideology turns our relations with nature on their head. It makes prime, it, it gives primacy to the um, human beings' struggle to get from nature what they, it, they need in order to survive, and entirely leaves out the other aspect, which is the unity with nature, the fact that we are part of nature. Um, and that this unity is not some empty abstraction, but is the actual concrete and objective reality of our existence. We can't exist outside of nature. Um, and 
it uh, it shows how we, we tried to show how this proposal that capitalism has that you can always solve problems by more production and by innovation is simply not true um, and it's a very one-sided um, view and particularly if the end product of your, all your innovation is profit something that actually if you think about it stands entirely outside of the system it stands outside of the natural system of human beings uh, relations to the planet um, and it goes on to say that we tried very hard and Donald was very helpful in this to put forward the uh, what you might almost call the spiritual side of this as well um, where we say that you know under capitalism even our human relations are profoundly alienated and commodified clearly a major source of unhappiness and mental ill health yet we bravely continue to struggle against these damaged relations because of our inner feelings, our intuition and sense of what's right and wrong, and our ability to care for others. In other words, those natural aspects which Karina was talking about yesterday, which are present in the human, but which are alienated uh, and undermined uh, by the capitalist interpretation of our relationship to nature. Um, so, um, and then we go on to talk about how people across the globe are showing they're ready for alternatives and that the People's Assembly is a, a good model and we say a lot more in here about the People's Assembly which I won't go into in any depth here because I know you're all going to take this home and read it with great care and attention and send us your Notes. comments, notes, <laughs> reviews and you're going to review it on lots of websites and say how interesting it is <coughs> how everyone should buy a copy. Yeah. So that's it from us. And now yeah. I think we've got five minutes, haven't we? For yeah. questions yeah. and discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.